Hey everybody, Brett Siples here from Siples Records. Uh, I'm going to start doing this video series. Uh, so now that uh, I own a record store, um, a lot of you, I'm sure, you know, would understand this. Like a lot of cool stuff comes in. Sometimes it's really hard to let that stuff go. So uh, every month uh, I'm just going to put what I take home uh, aside and then I'm going to show it to you guys and uh, yeah it's uh, it'll be fun there's a lot of a lot of cool stuff that comes in like I said and uh, I'm a collector so it's it's gonna be a real problem but I'm doing okay so um, <clears throat> but before I get into that uh, please like and subscribe uh, turn on your notifications I'm gonna be doing this every month and I'm gonna be doing other stuff as well um, the store has been going great. You know, we're a little over a month and a half in and, uh, the response has been phenomenal. Um, you know, sales are great. I, I keep getting a lot of stuff in. Um, and it's literally almost every day there's stuff coming in, new stuff. Um, and you know, really good stuff. So usually about every two weeks I, I put, you know, new arrivals out. <clears throat> and I'm going to try and stick with that until it gets, you know, so much where I have to do it every week. Um, but that's something, you know, for you guys to look forward to and me too. Uh, last week I put out a really killer collection of a lot of classic rock stuff that I got from a buddy of mine. And uh, I ended up upgrading a lot of my stuff uh, from that collection. So some of the stuff that got put out was actually my stuff. Uh, which was nice, but, you know, this other stuff was nicer. So I won't go through all of that, but uh, I do have a few things here. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, it's been good. Thank you for all the support. Uh, thank you for the five-star Google reviews. I have one four-star review with no explanation. I know who it, who it was, but uh, that's annoying. But, you know, whatever. You can't please everybody. So... Anyway, we'll get to it. I've got, and I've got every, all kinds of stuff here. So, um, we'll do, uh, we'll do eight tracks first because I do love a good eight track. <clears throat> um, all right. So I bought a huge collection of, there were over 500 eight tracks. If you saw the post, I mean, there's like three giant totes and then, um, like a small milk crate full of eight tracks. So I did get a few from that. <clears throat> the first one is a Kiss Rock and Roll Over RCA Club edition. Some of these can be really tough. I don't think this one's tough, but I didn't have one and it's super clean, uh, you know, for a white cart eight track. So that's cool. Um, next one, I don't, I, I've personally never seen this, but uh, I haven't searched it out either, but this is Black Sabbath heaven and hell which is a, just a killer record uh first one with dio title track is is just amazing one of the coolest things it also has a great uh record bar uh tape warranty thing you know they write like when it was bought this one was uh june 14th of 80 so how cool is that? I don't know when that record came out, like what day, but it's probably pretty close to the beginning. <clears throat> um, Meat Loaf, Bad Out of Hell. There's nothing special about it. Uh, it's just a little cleaner than the one that I had, so that's cool. Um, if you don't know, I'm a big Hank Jr. fan. Um, so I got Major Moves, Columbia House with the blue uh, label, which is cool. Um, greatest hits and, um, family tradition. And is this, yeah, this is RCA as well. They, uh, RCA did really cool stuff. They, um, you know, they always had different labels. They always put their, you know, their catalog numbers on everything. So that's, that's fun to collect. And then the last two eight tracks, um, I got Alice Cooper, School's Out. 
pretty clean other than that little you know nib there <clears throat> and then lace and whiskey so these are going into my personal collection for the moment um yeah that's always subject to change um <clears throat> got a couple of cds um a friend of mine gave me a kiss unplugged uh this is a crc columbia house edition um, it's not in the greatest shape. I did put a new case on it, but I didn't have the Columbia House version, so that's that. Um, also, a friend of mine, Brian Banks, he sent me his uh, new solo album. It's great. He's a brilliant guitar player. Look him up, Brian J. Banks. Uh, just awesome, awesome stuff. Um, <clears throat> these two I ordered... I'm kind of on a mission to get uh, all of the Metallica shows that I've been to on CD. So I, I bought the Metallica CDs from LiveMetallica.com from St. Louis because I was just there uh, I don't know, towards the end of last year. So that's cool. <coughs> um, move on to cassettes. Um, Henry Lee Summer. Time for big fun. Uh, these are, these are really tough. Um, just you know that album in general, I think is is the toughest one to get. This is his second record, the last one to be on the indie majestic label, uh, and indie I mean Indianapolis. Um, but yeah, it's just tough for whatever reason. Um, you know, they just didn't make a lot of them. After this, he got signed to CBS, and then he re-recorded some of this stuff and put out a, you know, full-length album. So, ah, I did miss a CD, but I'll get to it. So, I got that. <clears throat> Super cool. Um, another friend that I've met through the store um, brought me a couple of cause singles. Uh, Metallica, The Memory Remains which is cool. It's got a really bizarre version of For Whom the Bell Tolls on it. Um, but yeah, got that. I love the load reload era. And then uh, another Henry Lee Summer, Hey Baby. Uh, this is a pretty big hit off of his uh, fourth record, but it was his second with CBS. So that's cool. Uh, you just don't see a lot of this stuff. If you're not familiar with Henry Lee Summer, he's from Brazil, Indiana, which is where I'm from. And, uh, you know, had, had some pretty decent success, uh, you know, on MTV and in the 80s. So it's, it's fun to see stuff like that, you know, from someone who made it from where I'm from. Uh, last two cassettes are, uh, <laughs> this is kind of funny, uh, Earl Pitts. And, uh, he's a, he's like a redneck comedian. Um, he, uh, they used to play him on, in the mornings. So like before we would go to church, I think it was before, maybe after. <clears throat> I just remember hearing him on the country station in the, you know, in the nineties and early two thousands. Uh, but they would just play a snippet of his stuff. So I came across those in a collection and uh, I started listening to him, and it brought back all these great memories of, you know, riding with my parents uh, in our 1997 GMC Jimmy, and, uh, you know, with my sister and, and all that stuff. So that's fun. I kept those. Um, hopefully I'll come across some more. I, I started looking them up, but I don't need to go down that rabbit hole. If I find them, I'll just keep them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Random. Uh, but another friend that comes into the store, uh, I had mentioned that I really liked Civil War and Confederate history, and uh, he said he found this in a display case that he bought, and uh, we worked out a trade. But this is a Confederate, I'm trying to get the glare off of there, Confederate $5 bill, uh, which is super cool. It's not super rare or anything, but like, you know, it's it's legit. And, uh, you know, for being, what, 160 years old or whatever it is, 
I, that's it's just crazy. So um, yeah, it's really cool. It's got Jefferson Davis uh, on uh, on there, and uh, yeah, just very cool. So I know that's not music related, but it did come through the store, so that's why it's on here. <clears throat> All right, moving on. I've recently got into Real to Real. Um, I should have grabbed them, but I, I recently got some Kiss Reel to Reels, which are, you know, they're pretty tough, especially to find in good condition for a good price. But I ended up getting a live Rock and Roll Over and Destroyer. Um, and then I got a deck from another friend of mine who comes into the store. And so I've been trying to get that going and, and listening to stuff. But he uh, got me this Buddy Rich band real and i got another one from him as well that which i'll do on the the next video but uh this thing is recorded at seven and a half um they do like seven and a half three and three quarter and then like one and seven eighths or something but you know the faster it is the better it sounds and this thing sounds amazing and i mean you know buddy rich is the man but um <clears throat> yeah just so cool uh, oh, there we go cool cool label on there and uh yeah tape man it's great so yeah if you have any reel to reels that you want to get rid of hit me up um i had a i had a couple others i had a oh, i had a frampton comes alive that i sold and then i had a um jethro tall aqualung which i sent to my friend Matt, who is uh, is a big fan of that record. Um, <clears throat> here's the other CD that I got, which is a CD long box of uh, Way Past Midnight. This is Henry's fifth record. I think it's the fifth. Uh, this one didn't come out on vinyl in the US. It did over in Europe, which I have that on vinyl from there. But uh, it's always cool to, to find a sealed CD long box, especially with, you know, of somebody like Henry Lee. And I know this, this episode's pretty Henry Lee heavy, but just, just deal with it. Um, I've, got, I've got some 45s here. We don't have to go through all of them. Um, but I, I got in a huge collection of country 45s. And, um, so I kept, you know, some of them, I'm a big Alan Jackson fan. I actually got to meet Alan Jackson when I was, you know, really young with my sister. Uh, so that was cool. We saw him a couple times. I, he needs to do another tour so I can go see him again. But, um, I got, uh, this is in the wrong sleeve because Alan was on air stuff, but I got to swap that out. But, um, this is, uh, Summertime Blues with Hole in the Wall. Um, this is a promo copy of Here in the Real World, which is pretty huge. You know, <clears throat> um, Wanted, which is a really great song. This is also a promo. Um, Chasing That Neon Rainbow, one of my absolute favorites, um, you know, just a great song about being in a band and like chasing that dream, you know, uh, which I'm very accustomed to. <laughs> so, uh, and then finally, uh, this one is, is, you know, I don't know. This is my favorite Alan Jackson song ever, which is Someday. Uh, this isn't a promo, so it's got From a Distance on the back, um, but yeah, just a great song. So I got those. I also got uh, a promo copy of Hal Ketchum's Small Town Saturday Night, uh, which I don't know. This just reminds me of being in high school, you know, getting my license and, you know, just hanging out with my buddies and, <clears throat> you know, going and drinking and getting into trouble. Um, I also have started collecting Elvis pretty, I mean, anything that comes in Elvis, I usually, I usually kind of nab it and then compare with mine or, you know, whatever. So I got a picture sleeve of my way, uh, with America on the back. Um, I got 
um, a couple of little EPs. This is A Touch of Gold. So there's like four songs on here, I believe on maybe each side. I think there's four songs. Um, and Peace in the Valley. So those are fun. Normally with Elvis, uh, I will, if I don't have it, I'll keep it regardless of condition. Um, and then hopefully just upgrade over time. Uh, I was playing a show one night in Louisville and, you know, played classic rock for three hours and um, <clears throat> just didn't want to listen to to that stuff, classic rock or metal or anything. And uh, so I was like, I just need something different. So I put on the Elvis channel on Sirius XM and then I just totally got it. And now, I, you know, I just, I love Elvis. He, you know, he can really put me in a good mood um, when I'm not. Uh, the other thing that I got, the last 45, is uh, Let's Put the X in Sex from Australia with Calling Dr. Love. I'm pretty sure I have this already, but this one's pretty clean. Um, oh, yeah, it's even got the price sticker from 1990 on it. So that's pretty killer. <laughs> two bucks. I didn't pay two bucks for it. I wish I did. <clears throat> but I've got to compare it to mine, and then, I don't know. I collect anything smashes, thrashes, and hits really hard. So um, I'm only missing a few things. I've got a copy from every country that ever made one. Uh, I just need a promo copy from Czechoslovakia, which is literally just a gold stamp on the jacket, and then a, I think a red ink stamp on the label. Um, I've only seen a picture of one. I've never seen one for sale or anything. And then they did an Armed Forces Radio and Television Service record, which has half of Smashes on it, and then the other half is R.E.M. Uh, green. And then there is a Metal Shop uh, radio program record that has, uh, I think it's X and Sex on it, and then, you know, they talk about the record, maybe. So I need that. Uh, so if you have those, hit me up. I'm interested, um, and we'll get to we'll get to actual records now because that's what this is really about. So I upgraded my Cat Scratch Fever. This one's super clean. It's got the you know orange label, first press. Uh, the jacket is just crisp. So kind of hard to find that stuff. There are certain bands and certain artists that you know people just took to parties and. You know, the records just got trashed. So <clears throat> the new stuff, like early stuff, is is usually in that category. Um, I got a couple of uh, T-Rex records, which I didn't have at all, which is awesome. Electric Warrior. Again, this came from that classic rock collection. Um, that was just, everything was super clean. Killer Gatefold. Um you know, just a, a really crisp record. So I, I just couldn't, couldn't let it go. Um, and then I also got the slider again, super clean. Just, you know, you just don't see this stuff like anywhere, you know, in good condition. And when you do, it's expensive. So took that, <clears throat> uh, I upgraded my Eagles greatest hits. That's another band where, you know, a lot of their stuff, it's everywhere, but finding it in super clean, good condition is just so tough because people just took it to parties, they drank, they smoked, you know, like they didn't care. Um, another upgrade, Alice Cooper, Flush the Fashion. This isn't a super popular record, but I dig it. And, uh, you know, anything Alice, I, uh, you know, I collect and try and keep. So <clears throat> shout out to my buddy, Glenn playing drums for him. And it was Alice's birthday the other day. So happy birthday, Alice. Uh, another band that's super tough to, to get clean copies of is Bad Company. Uh, run with the pack. Super clean, you know, just a little bit of ring wear, but with shiny covers like this, you're gonna have that. So, but yeah, it's like brand new, almost. Just great stuff. Uh, I didn't have a clean copy of this and I just feel like everybody should have it 
you know, Brampton Comes Alive. It's not something that I'm going to listen to all the time, but this one, again, super clean. Um, and uh, it's just a must, you know. So I kept that. <clears throat> I swear, this is this is the the tote of stuff that is hard to find clean. Um, the first Aerosmith record. I didn't have this. Um, I've had a lot of them in my possession before, but they're just always beat to hell. So um, this one again, is just super clean. So I had to keep that. Uh, I upgraded my rocks from that collection and then sold my personal copy that I had to my buddy Ted in the store. So thanks, Ted. <clears throat> so this is fun. This is, um, oh, where is this from? This is from the Netherlands. So this is a, this is a comp, you know, compilation. Um, and there's, there's actually some, there's one band on here. I can't remember. Les Dudek, maybe? Um, that's actually in a foreign language, but this has got Cheap Trick, Heart, um, Molly Hatchet, which is why I kept it, I believe. Uh, the Tubes, Aerosmith, Bloister Cult, Styx, Nugent, uh, Judas Priest, uh, Boston, Ario. Oh, and uh, Trillion, which is a band. I actually, I'm going to have to grab that record really quick. But um, Trillion is a band that I just um, discovered through the store. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll grab that record really quick. One second. So, this is the record. This came out in 78. They only did two albums. Um, but it's like late 70s prog. Um, kind of prog. It's, it's like... I get Triumph and uh, Queen and Sticks vibes from it. You know, early Rush, maybe a little. Um, but I had a copy of this in the store. They're not expensive. You know, I sold it for five bucks to a friend of mine. And we were listening to it. And I was like, damn, this is really cool, man. So I went on eBay, started searching it out. And um, I always try and search out promos if I can. You know, those were the first of the first pressings, um, 90% of the time. And, uh, so the promo for this is actually on blue translucent, translucent vinyl, um, uh, from 78, which is super cool. Um, if you haven't heard this, if you don't know the band, check them out. Um, I just friended a couple of their members on Facebook and talked to their drummer for a second. So that's super cool. Um, but yeah, Trillion. Uh, so, moving on. Uh, as I said, I'm a huge, uh, I'm a, you know, I'm a drummer, obviously. Uh, so, anything Gene Krupa or Buddy Rich, I always try and keep. Um, but I got this, the original drum battle, Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich. On Verve, which is cool. And this was actually sealed when I got it. So, opened it up, listened to it. Um, had a slight warp to it, but that's okay. Um, there's a cool Verve label. As you see my reflection in the thing. So, I got that. Just got a few more here. I promise these videos will get better after I keep doing them. And I'm sorry for putting it off. Um, I also, I bought in like seven boxes of records from a guy and there was a lot of junk in there, but there was also a lot of really good stuff. So one of the really good things is there was a Ozzy Bark at the Moon in the shrink with the nice price hype sticker, which is fun. And, um, 
this is like, this is my third copy of this that I've had. So I had a French pressing first that was pretty rough, but playable. A friend of mine sent me a copy just like this. Um, that was in better shape than the French one. So I sold the French one and then I got this in that collection and then upgraded and sold the rest. So, uh, you know, anything early Aussie, you know, I've had a lot of this stuff and it, again, it's just, it's hard to find in good condition for a good price. So I always try and nab that. There was a really nice copy of Blizzard in there. Uh, it was missing the inner sleeve though. So I didn't end up keeping that. Um, but yeah, I'm getting close to having all that early stuff from him. Um, and my favorite Aussie record is Ultimate Sin, and I've got a promo copy of that, so that's great. Um, this next one, I believe this is from Germany. I'd have to look, but uh, one of my favorite records of all time, Jackson Brown, Running on Empty. Great concept record about being in a band and being on the road. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, this is either from the Netherlands or Germany. I'd have to look and I'd have to get my glasses to look. So it's just, it's foreign. And uh, yeah, like I said, I, I love this record. And what tipped me off to it at first was um, it didn't have the, the booklet with it. So I don't know if these didn't come with them, but you know, you kind of always, like they always have the booklet with them. So I was like, oh, well, that's that's kind of weird. And um, yeah, and I was like, oh, this isn't from here. So kept that. It's a, depending on how many records I have, it, you know, it's it might be a Desert Island record. Um, so this is rough. Uh, but again, I'd never seen another one. Uh, a new friend, Travis, brought some stuff in. He's got to give me the Kiss singles. Uh, but this is a Henry Lee Summer 12-inch single of Wish I Had a Girl. And like I said, the cover is rough. The vinyl is great, uh, but it's got this hype sticker that's rough. And, you know, hopefully I can upgrade this one of these days. But uh, here's the label on that. So... So this is cool. Um, being from Brazil and Terre Haute, you know, kind of goes along with the Henry Lee Summer thing. There was a, a local musician, Don Morris. He had a band uh, in the 80s that put out, you know, a couple records and um, had, you know, had some regional success and uh, unfortunately um, passed away not too long ago. And, um, my mom had this record when I was growing up and I always wanted to take it, you know, take hers and go see him and, and have him sign it. And it just never happened. So if there's anybody like that, go see them, just, you know, make a point to do it. You just never know how long people are going to be around. But Don's old bass player, Doc Long, who's a local radio guy here back in the day, Brought me in a whole box of, of these records. Uh, Don Morris Band, uh, Indiana Has Cowboys 2. And I had him sign it, which is just, you know, so awesome. But there's uh, there's Don Morris in all his glory. This is great, like, uh, you know, late 80s style country. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I've got a, I've got a box of these. Um, sold a few already. Uh, if you're interested in them, they're all sealed. Uh, I literally opened this so, so Doc would sign it. Um, so yeah, super cool. He also gave me some, a couple of posters from PFR 103, which is a radio station back here in the day that my parents listened to. So I'm going to hang one of those up in the store as a homage to that. Um, I'm also a big Southern rock fan, so... I upgraded my 38 Special Strength in Numbers. These have a die cut jacket, which is super cool. Um, I believe my copy that I had before was an RCA, and this is just a standard copy. So 
Um, I never really believed the whole record club thing. You know, they sound different or whatever, but I've AB'd some stuff and some of them do. Not all of them, but some of them do. Usually RCA stuff is fine, but um, I always try and go for the original stuff unless it's a band that I collect really hard and then I'll just collect everything. Um, so I got the first Molly Hatchet record, again, Southern Rock. I collect Molly Hatchet really hard. Um, so this one, the first record, and then Flirting with Disaster. Um, and you're thinking like, ah, oh, these are, these are everywhere. And they are, but these are from the Netherlands. So that's why I kept those. They've got the same inner sleeves as... The American stuff, um, it's got the, the blue Epic label, but there's just more, you know, writing and stuff on there, you know, to denote that it's from the Netherlands or Holland. So that is super cool. Like I said, I collect them pretty hard. So maybe one day I'll do a video of just all the different Molly Hatchet stuff that I have. I need to do that with Survivor too. Um, Here's one, you probably wouldn't think that I would collect this stuff, but I love Jerry Reed. And this is live Jerry Reed, hot stuff. Um, his stuff can be pretty tough to find because a lot of people, once they find it, they, you know, they want it. So uh, if you're not familiar with Jerry Reed, he is the snowman in Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, he reminds me a lot of my grandpa, so, you know, just <laughs> listening to him talk and sing always just reminds me of my grandpa, and it's, you know, it's very funny, but, um, just a brilliant guitar player. Like, even if you're not into to country stuff, if you're a guitar player or a musician, you have to listen to this guy. I mean, he's just ridiculous. Like, just go on YouTube, there's a video of him with Chet Atkins, who's, uh, another guitar virtuoso from the country world and I mean just watching this dude like pick it's just it's insane so definitely check it out um when I got those Don, Don Morris records uh, a friend of mine was like hey I need to get one of those mine got ruined back in the day and uh he's like yeah I had another one it was like cornucopius or something that had Don on it so literally right after that one of those came in and so it's Cornucopius Volume 1. This has got um, uh, George Ray, the 1-2-Cs, Don Morris Band, Susan Clark, and Henry Lee Summer. So that, that checks two boxes with me with Don Morris and uh, Henry Lee. So these are all like local Terre Haute musicians, which is super cool. Um, there's Don Morris band, there's Henry Lee looking pretty cool. Um, and I, I believe that Henry Lee song is the original version of wingtip shoes, which is a little different than the one that ended up on his self-titled record that he did for CBS. So, all right, last but not least, one of my favorite bands of all time. I was lucky enough to see them in 2003 and I got to meet them and got this record signed by all of the, you know, the members that were on it. Um, I've been lucky enough to meet and talk with Rudy Sarzo uh, a little bit recently. Um, so that's great, but Quiet Riot, Metal Health, the first heavy metal record to go to number one. Uh, Obviously, I've got multiple copies of this, but this one in the shrink with the hype sticker, uh, this hype sticker was different than mine. So I had to keep it. And so there's that really nice shape. It does have some, like a sticker residue. I might be able to get that off of there, but I really don't want to mess it up. And actually, while we're sitting here, this is my signed record. Um, of the metal health lineup. It's kind of hard to see. I've got it in a frame, but um, 
you know, they're all there. Rest in peace, Kevin Dubro. Rest in peace, uh, Frankie Benali. Just two amazing musicians. And, uh, you know, no one, no one sang or, you know, no one sang like Kevin Dubro. Um, at least not effectively, I don't think. And uh, Frankie Benali was just a powerhouse. You know, uh, his drumming still inspires me. So I believe that is it, unless I've missed something. But uh, if I did, I'll, I'll throw it in on the next one. Like I said, I'm going to be doing this every month. So this will be, you know, what I took home from the store in January, basically. And uh, yeah, again, thank you for all the support. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, comment below, you know what you liked the best. If you have any questions on anything, be sure to comment, send me a message, whatever. I am on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, X, Twitter. I don't really use Twitter all that much, but I'm there. So occasionally I'll throw a picture up on there or something. But uh, Instagram and Facebook are usually the best. I'm gonna up my game on TikTok and YouTube. Everything is at Siples Records, uh, and it is Siples, so be sure to get that right. Uh, all right, guys, uh, I got to get to work. Uh, we're open 11 to 7, Tuesday through Saturday. We are at the corner of 20th and Crawford, right down the road from Charlie's, so uh, I'll see you at the store. Thanks.